Yeah, did you see the game? There was this uh, guy out in Jurassic Park had a cutout of uh, Cleveland Brown from Family Guy. And um, I was thinking, why the, he- why the heck does this guy have a cutout of Cleveland Brown? And uh, then it took me two seconds to put two and two together. And uh, I was like, oh, yeah, Cleveland, Cleveland Brown. And then I thought about it some more. And I'm like, oh, maybe they named the football or maybe they named him after the football team, the Cleveland Browns. This is BSS Sports. This is BSS Sports. Fire to the end zone. It's hot. It's Greg Lewis. Touchdown. Brooks with one. Let's it fly at the horn. It's gone. Here's Cosby with a burst of speed up the middle. Gets open. It's gone. A grand slam for Ayra. Pure genius from David Beckham. And it's in. Terry Henry with a bullet. Touchdown. With Thomas Brooks, Steve Shields, and Trevor Struthers. Only. On 91X. Good evening. It's Tuesday. Normally we were on yesterday, but it was a holiday. So hopefully you enjoyed your long weekend. My name is Stephen Schill, and I am with Trevor Struthers. Trevor, did you have a good weekend, I hope? It was fun. Lots of uh, interesting sports to watch. And that makes Trevor happy. The great and powerful world of sports. So obviously, last night, Toronto uh, taking out the Cleveland Cavaliers, but not permanently tying up the series. Uh, a lot of talk about Jonas Valanciunas being able to play for that game. Uh, in fact, that did not happen. It was uh, Bismack Biombo BB-8, the new nickname for him, <laughs> which I truly love. But... Do you know? Do you think that the Raptors kind of made a superstar out of Bismack Biombo, or did he just kind of live up to the moment? Because everybody's all the talk is seeming to switch from Kyle and Demar throughout the season. We didn't really hear much about Bismack, but right now in this series, it is all a Bismack Biombo. Well, it's not necessarily all Bismack Biombo, but it's more Bismack Biombo than we thought it would be. And obviously, the uh, Valanciunas injury last series gave him the opportunity to do what he's doing. But it's obviously all on Bismack, the fact that he's doing what he's doing. And the the Game 3, where he had the the franchise record for rebounds, I mean, that's all uh, Bismack Biombo and the way he plays, the way he's just a big guy, but also how physical he is and what he's willing to do to to, to get those boards. If this team continues what they're doing, and with that being said, I'm talking about how they're not able to do great on the road, uh, at least so far, it seems. I mean, like, we had the issue with the Heat, and now we're having the issue with the Cavaliers. Do you think this is going to be a problem if they're just going to do this back-and-forth thing? Because last time, they had their final home game at home. This time around, it's a different story, and Cleveland has the deciding game. Do you think this is going to be a series that's going to be based off whoever's at home is going to win, or do you think the Raptors are going to be able to sneak one if that's the case? Well, it's an interesting point because when's the last time that they didn't have home court advantage in a seven-game series? The last three series that they've played have gone seven games, and they had home court against Brooklyn. They had home court against the Pacers. They had home court against the Heat, but they don't have home court on this one, obviously. And obviously, I mean, if they don't win on the uh, a game on the road, then yeah, it's going to be troublesome and they'll lose the series. But, uh, I mean, the whole basis for this series going in was try to defend home court, and all you have to do is steal one game in Cleveland. You don't need to steal two, although it's great if you can but uh yeah you just got to try to steal one in cleveland and uh and this at this point you know steal game five or game seven and make sure you win game six so kind of a double whammy here the cleveland cavaliers dante jones got suspended uh for punching bismack biombo uh in the prior game before uh last night and uh Draymond Green of the Golden State Warriors, Neen, Stephen Adams of the Oklahoma City Thunder, and the other series in the Western Conference. Uh, But no suspension for Draymond Green, although looking at video replays, yeah, sure, it's going for a rebound and stuff, but it looked like Draymond Green got his knee up into the groin pretty hard, and I don't know how that motion would have helped him land or get the ball more than just kind of making sure Adams was unable to get it, uh, for lack of a better term. But what is it with players and getting, uh, I don't know how I want to call this, fairly violent uh, towards one another in, like when the playoffs go on. Because, yes, I know it's a sport, and, yes, things get competitive. But, like, punching somebody in the face and kneeing them a look pretty hard in the groin over a basketball game, do you think that it has any merit, or is it just kind of in the heat of the moment? Well, neither of us have actually been, like, in a field of play where things have been that intense. You know, professional sport at its top level and a big playoff game. So it's hard to actually speak to that. 
But I mean, yeah, you know, emotions are running high, and at some point, emotions take over. Um, both did kind of seem like they were intentional. The one thing that was interesting was uh, Jones, for which he got suspended for. That one was a lot more subtle than um, Draymond Green's. And but with when you watch both of them, I mean, originally when I saw the the first look at Green's, I thought it was um, not on purpose at all. But then when you see it again, you see a slight hesitation, and I'm sort of wondering what you know what he's thinking in that moment. And maybe there's more uh, purpose, more intent behind it than I originally thought. It's weird with the whole video replay thing because you also get more of a, okay, this is what happened instead of this, okay, this is the call at the moment. Things end up getting progressed long, long way down the line, and uh, I don't know whether the whole video replay thing is a good thing or a bad thing, mainly because of time restraints. I think it's a good thing, but we're seeing sports take up much longer than it needs to be. Well, but yeah, and with that too, I agree. I mean, like, the, the ultimate goal with sports nowadays, now that you have the technology, is get the call right. I almost don't care how long it takes. I mean, at, at some point there is like a five like minute window where eventually you have to call it off. But uh, you like the whole thing now with the technology that we have is get the call right. Exactly. And speaking of uh, taking your time with games and trying to rush things, and baseball uh, didn't talk about it last week, but the Toronto Blue Jays and the Texas Rangers, holy jeez. What a storm that was. What a storm it still is. Apparently, okay, well, if you don't know, essentially, Jose Bautista got punched in the face last week. If you didn't know that, well, now you know. And uh, there was a barbecue store or something in Texas that offered uh, Odour, the player that punched Bautista, free barbecue for life because they were very upset that he did the bat flip in the playoffs of last year. And apparently that guy of the barbecue store or whatever, is getting death threats uh, from some Toronto fans now, and that was making headlines uh, yesterday and a bit today. So it's kind of uh, strange, per se, how this is working, but we weren't able to talk about it. So, Trevor, when you were watching this, I know that you were you were like, okay, this this is wild, this, this is great, but this is also bad because this is baseball. What were your thoughts when you were looking at this? Well... I mean, I didn't initially get to see the whole thing. I had to watch it back on replay because that happened at the same time as uh, the end of a Raptors game. And so um, at that point, you don't really think anything's going to happen. I mean, this is Jose Bautista's last at bat that Texas is going going to like have against him this year. They don't play again now at, at all this year unless they meet in the playoffs somehow. So you're thinking, you know, at this point, it's water under the bridge. They must not be, be able, like they're not going to do anything, right? Because they haven't in the like they didn't hit them at all when the um, – they were in Toronto, and they didn't do it in the first two games of the series in Texas. And so you didn't really think anything would happen. The guy on the hill was Matt Bush, um, who wasn't even on the team last year, who wasn't even a part of the Texas team. Now, I mean, obviously he probably did that to earn some respect points or whatever from his teammates. But uh, then, after, like, I mean, that shouldn't have happened. And let's go back. This whole thing is about a, a bat flip, for crying out loud, a bat flip. That's all this thing is over. Like a bat flip doesn't hurt anybody. It might hurt you emotionally. It doesn't hurt you physically. So then you hit Bautista. So then Bautista's angry. Bautista slides angrily into second base. It's an illegal slide this year. It would have been legal last year, technically. It's your basic double play takeout slide with maybe a little extra punch behind it. Uh, and then we actually saw an actual punch from uh, Odor to Bautista, which kind of, I mean, I've heard people defend Odor because it's like, this guy might take out my legs with the slide. Of course, you know, he's not going to be very happy about it. But, uh, like, when's the last time you saw an actual legit punch in a baseball game? That's the, the whole thing where it, c it comes back to. And it, you obviously can't do that, and that's why Odor got the, the biggest suspension out of everything. The whole thing is uh, an SHIT show, and uh, this is not over. Because they chose to do it in Bautista's last at-bat of the series, it's not over. And if, Whether it be in the playoffs, it might not be in the playoffs because the playoffs are so you know intense, or whether it be next year, this thing is going to continue. It's weird though because they post uh, somebody made a video of Odour uh, sliding into second bases, and there was a lot of very violent, worse than what Bautista did, slides going into second base, and not much came about it. So he's kind of a person that gets mad when somebody does it to him. That that's but... a thing, and also Odour, this isn't the first time he's actually punched an opponent. Apparently, I mean, I haven't actually seen the video, but I've seen it pop up on Twitter a couple of times. He had an issue with a Vancouver Canadiens player, surprise, another Canadian team. 
uh, which led to a fight on the field. So, I mean, this isn't his first rodeo. Well, the interesting thing I, I thought about too earlier, t- when the, like near after, just after this whole thing happened, is what happens if Odor and Bautista are like both all stars this year, or maybe even next year. Like, what's going to happen? Because they'd have to be on the same team. Yeah, I don't. That would make good headlines. That's what that would do. Uh, keeping with the theme of the Blue Jays and something that might have affected with the whole. Um, uh, Bang, uh, I will call it, is uh, their last place right now in their uh, division. And uh, rumors of Drew Storen being on the trade block. And, you know, if you're not a b- big Blue Jays fan, you're probably not going to know who Drew Storen is. But the point that I want to kind of talk about is what are the Jays going to do? If things don't turn around around the trade deadline and the All Star break, would you clean house? Because now is the time when you're going to get. A lot back. Now, not necessarily do you need a completely clean house, because, I mean, the Chicago White Sox, last year they weren't that good, and this year they're making very big strides. And there's just, what is the management going to do? Because you can keep these players, you can sign them, pay them the money, but if things just aren't working for a second time, what's the best course of action? Well, I mean, sure, they're uh, in last place right now, but they're also about a game back of being in third place. And they got a a three-game series, I think. Maybe, yeah, it's a three-game series coming up against uh, the Yankees, which is one of the teams that's half a game in front of them. There are only about four, maybe five games out of a playoff spot, and that that would be a wild card spot. So, by like, it's definitely not time to think about blowing things up yet. If if we do come around to um, the All. Or if we do come around, yeah, to the All Star break, even not necessarily the trade deadline because they fall in the same month. But um, yeah, if it comes to around that time and um, and you're like I don't know seven games out of a playoff spot, then you could look to maybe trading Bautista and Encarnacion if you haven't come to a, a deal with them yet because they're free agents at the end of the year. Uh, Drew Storen is also a free agent at the end of the year, and so they're probably not going to get much for him. There's a rumor that they're shopping him. They also might not be. Um, chances are that didn't, come out, uh, that didn't come out from the Blue Jays. That may have been from another team. And so maybe another team is just trying to get something going there. But um, Drew Storen hasn't been good this year, and Drew Storen's usually a lot better than what he has been this year. And so that's one of the things right now, if you were to trade him, you're not going to get much for him. So you hold on to him and you hope he can turn it around. And uh, keeping on this Canadian theme, uh, Trevor, there was a IIHF tournament that Canada won, uh, but there was literally no news about this. Like, okay, there was, but it seemed that everything was pushed aside. Is Canada all Raptors now, or is the IIHF kind of always been the lesser cared about tournament? Well, the tournament already falls around a bad time because it's during the NHL playoffs, the conference finals. And uh, I mean, I don't know if it's ever carried over into the NHL finals, but I mean, being around the conference finals, it's uh, it's tough. And yeah, with the Raptors this year doing what they're doing, they're also playing while this tournament's going on. Um, this, the tournament this year was in Russia, which meant games around, you know, mi- um, mid-morning to early afternoon, which isn't obviously the best time for a lot of people here uh, because we're at work and doing stuff or going to school. So uh, it's not the best time slot either. I feel like a lot of people don't care about the tournament because the best players are never really there. That was definitely the case with the U.S. this year. They had a very watered-down team. But uh, Canada iced a pretty good team, and they ended up winning the tournament. Um I don't know why put people don't put more stock into this tournament. I mean, I didn't get too into the tournament, but um, it was something that I, I definitely paid attention to. We don't know if Canada, or we don't know if any any NHLers are going to be going to the next um, Olympics, uh, like any more Olympics. So uh, the thing that we have to rely on is this tournament, the World Juniors, which comes obviously around uh, the, new, the New Year, and this new World Cup idea that uh, the NHL is putting on. And so if the, this whole World Cup thing isn't as intriguing as it might be, like if it, if it isn't as intriguing as the Olympics, maybe people will start to look at the World Championships um, with more, you know, put more stuff into it. I don't know why people are into it because the double uh, the double IHF is, puts on the World Juniors, which, yeah, that's the be- the best players of that age. And this isn't necessarily the best players overall in the World Championships, but it's – being put on by the same people so i don't get why there isn't a little more intrigue for something like the world championships we've also had to break some kind of record because it seems for hockey and basketball that every series is going to the last possible game it just seems like constantly it's like oh game six game seven yep right across the board very few sweeps 
As Which is in, good. It makes for great entertainment. I I fully <laughs> agree. Everybody loves a bit of free hockey and free basketball. That's it for this episode of BSS Sports. Make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at BSS Sports. And you can check us out on YouTube archiving at BSS Productions. My name is Stephen Schill with Trevor Struthers. And uh, understand this is a Tuesday, but yesterday was a holiday, so we will be back next Monday at 2.30. Enjoy your day.